Okay, so welcome um, everyone. Um, so thank you for the introduction. I'm really glad to be here with you today and to speak about design transformation and the special relationship that it has with uh, design system. Uh, before I delve into the topic, I'd like to give you um, some context about the company, if you don't know Thales, um, and understand the journey we've been, we've been in. Um, so Thales is a large multinational headquartered in Paris. Uh, we are rough, roughly 80,000 people um, and uh, for a revenue of 20 billion. And as you can see on this slide, we operate in very different um, market segments from space, avionics, transportation, defense, security, and we power some of the most critical infrastructure in the world. What it tells you about a company is that um, it is a company with a very strong culture for technology, innovation, engineering. There is one thing you cannot take for granted is that uh, the understanding for design. I think design is very new, um, not only in the company, but I, I think generally in, 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 in these markets, in this, um, in this segment. So what my presentation is going to be about is um, two things mainly. Um, the first one is just to understand what it means to bring design and, and transform the company at scale. Um, that will be the first part. The second part is uh, the relationship it has with the design system projects that we have, and there is a link. And, and finally, and probably a lot of you want to hear about the mistakes we did, and probably some you know we would try not to repeat um, in, in the future. So let's get right away um, into the topic um, and speak about design transformation. So um, if we think about Thales design and our journey, I, I like to um, think of it in, in, with this three act uh, structure. Uh, for a long time, you know, until 2017, um, I think we've had some level of UX design human factors in, in, the, in the company, but most of these activities would be uh, basically what, I, what we call undercover. So they will not be official. Designers will not be called designers. The HR systems didn't know what design is and uh, our process um, didn't recognize the activity of, of design. Um, and still it was happening undercover. And then that changed um, around 2018, with a big plan for the company, not on design, but on digital transformation. But this digital transformation plan identified, you know, some strategic work stream uh, in order to be successful. And the first work stream was about user experience design. So I was privileged enough to be um, appointed for leading uh, that transformation. And we started, as you will see, uh, to set up, you know, the framework for transforming the company. And around 20, uh, 2020, we um, started to articulate and, and speak of ourselves more as a Thales design, a design capability design organization in, in the company. Now, if um, some of you are part of big organization, you know about transformation plan. And there is a, uh, a language, a transformation language that is true not only for design, but for any kind of transformation. We're speaking about frameworks and KPI and performance initiatives and dashboard and reporting. And so we were caught into this big transformation framework and started to do just that. We had transformation pillars and dozens and dozens of performance initiative, change initiatives along, along the way. And we did that not only for um, design in digital, uh, but design as a whole, we, we called it the design continuum. We said, if we change uh, talents and we bring design, we need to think about design holistically, design in engineering, product design, industrial design, service design, design thinking, and, and all these different uh, discipline um, associated with design. And of course, UX, UI in, 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 in digital, uh, digital world. And among these dozens of initiatives, um, some of them proved to be very effective and, and useful. And you can probably steal from that playbook, um, like having some executive sponsors and a strategic board um, with your main stakeholder. I think I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to have these in, um, in your radar. And then we built a basket of strategic projects. We call them value boosters, basically one per business line 
in, in, in the company that would be the flagship for that business. And then we move with the maturity model. And then we move on with HR analytics and doing a lot of benchmarks and community events. So these things, you can, you can redo them. I think they were, uh, and they proved to be very, uh, very efficient. But if I have to be honest, you know, um, and especially when you will start to pitch this transformation to decision makers and your executives, um, I suggest you don't present them the full-fledged plan and framework because it's basically boring for them. It's, it may be already lost maybe half of the audience today with this plan and frameworks and KPI. Um, but we got there and we had two, a pivot around 2020 and two breakthrough um, that help us uh, to change uh, basically that narrative. And basically what happened in 2020, uh, at the end of 2019, uh, uh, to be more precise, is first of all, we have a yearly uh, uh, event where we, we show the, the state of UX design in the company uh, to decision makers. And at that time, we um, built, created an inspirational movie about Thales Design saying, we more than just a transformation plan, we want uh, to build the design capability. We want to bring better user experience uh, to our customers and users. And that was really cool and created a lot of positive uh, buzz um, after that event. And just one month later, I had the opportunity to present the full plan to, to our executive committee at Thales Group. And I did the mistake of presenting them the full framework with the dozen initiatives and I, you know, overwhelmed them with information, and it was just boring as fig, as you were saying, Joel. Um, and there is only one thing I succeeded, I think, uh, during that meeting, is was my call to action. My call to action was very simple, precise. It was, give me the green light to launch the Thales Design System project next year. And uh, to some extent, they um, green-lighted it, they authorized, and they said, you need to do some homework now to uh, basically scope it, build a plan, um, estimate the funding, and so on and so on. And so I took that home uh, to my team, but basically we took it for more than what it was. We said, yes, we have green light for design system, but we could use that green light to actually scope Thales design. And we started to do just that during the Q1 of 2020. So we wrote an internal memo, quite extensive memo, uh, describing every component of what we thought was Thales Design needed, um, uh, needed to be. And then with that, we had a simplified version when um, these were the three components, the governance, the design ops and design system. And we, we tried to convince management that this was what we needed to have Thales Design. And it works, but actually the efficient way to do it is probably to do this, start with the design system and explain you know, what the design system is and the ROI and so forth, and the rest will come um, into place. Now, if you, we then started to pitch this design system. So some of the definition you see the, here, you can find them on, on, on Google quite, uh, quite easily, but then we showed the company that you know, having a design system will help to answer these questions. What is design at your company or our company? How do we design here? What is a Thales experience? How, does, how do we materialize the brand, the purpose um, of Thales into the product and service? And we started to make the link with uh, the design system platform that um, we were building. The second, um, design system also is also a very good way to show and, and demonstrate the value of design in a company. And so it will articulate a lot of the ROI um, uh, around uh, the platform. And so the three usual suspects for the ROI of design system is consistency, scalability, and competitivity. And for these, again, if, if you think uh, about it, is that to achieve the consistency and brand alignment and so forth, you need to have a vision for your design, a strategy, you know, a way to manage the assets. Um, the scalability and competitivity drive all the activity that you probably put in your design ops plan. And to organize and coordinate all these teams, that's where the governance come into play. And that's why I think, you know, when you, you, you start to, with the design system, this is where it's pulling um, the, the other topics. Now, um, for the final chapter, where we are today and um, how is it going? So first of all, this year, um, we had six months delay compared to the initial plan with the COVID situation. 
But at the start of this year, I could launch um, our two big projects related to the design uh, system. The first one is about digital. Um, and so it's about building um, um, our design system uh, on Figma, of course. Uh, we wouldn't be here otherwise. Um, and secondly, to work on the design language. So this is more aligning a holistic design language with the brand and, and foray into you know, industrial design, product design, uh, beyond uh, just uh, digital. So these are two major projects this year. And the one that we are releasing as we speak is our digital design system. It's called Quantum. And it contains all the usual suspects, uh, the brand standards, color, typography, and, and so forth. Um, it has a hybrid uh, contribution model um, um, with a core team, eight people, 25 guild members in the entities. And we have now a funnel of 20 pilot until Q1 uh, 2022 um, for deployment and adoption. So it's a great start for, um, for that project. Now, my conclusion. So in a lot of the change management book you can find, they always tell you find a flagship projects and usually they mean the business projects for your transformation. In the way Talis is organized, that doesn't really work because you could do one project in one business line and that will not transform the next one. And so when you do that, you finish with 20, 30 projects, which is not the point uh, of that recommendation. But then we found um, that design system actually is, is, is quite a nice uh, fit as this flagship project. It's visible, it's tangible, it's measurable, and, and you, you can very quickly um, show the value on the platform. And I think it's all about communicating the value of design to get you know, the more resource and more attention in the company. So that concludes my uh, presentation. Um, I'm happy to take questions um, online, offline, so uh, depending remaining time. Thank you.